I know your work well for many, many years, and, and what I've seen up to this point has been environmental portraiture, whether it's erotic or otherwise. In this new book, what brought you into the studio? Um, I wanted to put more focus on the, on the model, um, and I, I first thought I was going to shoot it with a curtain, and uh, I felt like that the, the texture was kind of taking away from the from what I was. It was a little too distracting for this, um, and so I started using the gray backdrop, which I thought was kind of a. It's neutral, and you know, and and a lot of the people I shot see themselves as gender neutral or don't see themselves as any specific gender. Um, or gender fluid, and so I thought that that kind of fit too. But it took a few times for me to try that, and then it turns out that in shooting uh, the models that way, um, I started to really like that and, and get a better feel for the uh, for that backdrop, that style, that way of shooting, which I'd never really done and before. And that's a single stroke. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, no, I use with one light on every fo- on on every shot with a softbox. It's an octa octa bank. Six foot octobank. I use with no flat to bounce back on. Nothing. No, no bounce. No nothing. When you photograph women prior to this project, were you trying to get the the what the sexiest photograph you could get, or or the most erotic photograph? And if you could define that, what your purpose was in photographing women in terms of what you were trying to elicit from your subject. Then I want to have. Then I have a follow up question. But now you're you're talking about a different subject, not the subject of the book. You're talking about me. Well, I'm not getting there. I'm going there, but I need to know something first. What were you trying to get from the women you photographed for your numerous other books? Many of them, and even a lot of the images in the book, in the in the previous books, I was shooting for like Barely Legal or Tight or one of those magazines. So I was getting a male audience. Yeah, I was. It, it, that was for them. But um, but my f- my favorite shots are the ones where the where the girl or the guy um, would be kind of more blank expressioned or the, or the expre- like you know for example like in the bondage work where the girl doesn't look like she's in pain it kind of she's just she's there and you you have to think about it a little bit more and and even the even the uh, shots in the settings that are clearly settings that are that are made for those publications um, if the model doesn't look as happy or smiling or just she's just kind of there and you have to think about the shot a little bit more. Um, those are my favorites. What do you mean by think about the shot some more in the terms of why is she there? Why is it this situation? Why isn't she reacting? Why? What do you mean? Think well, about it more. But it, uh, like if I, I think if the girl's in the setting and, 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 and in the context of the magazine for sure, if she's smiling, you just, you're kind of, it's a fantasy of this girl's happy and she's there and she wants you to look at her whereas like uh that's an important word sorry to interrupt that word fantasy doesn't seem like there's much fantasy in the gender queer book is that the right way to say yeah. it? um that it's much more reality you're trying to capture the reality but then again it seems to me you are capturing the reality of a whole set of young women it, going back to the women or yeah, I'm just trying yeah. to see the transition yeah. and what makes the what makes the gender queer portraits different. Different, yeah. I, I mean when I shot them, I shot them in different outfits. Some of them were comfortable in front of the camera, some of them were not comfortable. Talking about the latest book? Or? The latest book. Yeah. Um but I guess when I shoot anyone, sometimes they're comfortable, sometimes they're not. Um and I like I don't really favor one or the other. Um it's nice when someone's not too excited because uh um, otherwise, I think it, it, the photos don't always turn out good. They, you know, the model looks excited, you know, and it doesn't. So in this case, like the the gender queer project, uh, most of the models were ha- were you know felt a sense of uh, like they they liked being photographed. Some of them weren't super comfortable with it, but I felt like uh, um, it worked uh, in that combination of the of the ones that were confident with the being photographed and the other ones that were a little like uncertain about it I think uh, putting them together um, mm-hmm. it it works as a project mm-hmm. and did you shoot invariably shoot each individual or were there did sometimes three or four come at the same time or two come at the same time 
Um, I, I did two trips up north, and I shot oh, San Francisco, where many of that much of that community lives. Um, and, and I did uh, eleven shoots a day, like one after another. I booked them every half hour. I booked someone, and as my wife was getting the paperwork done and getting the IDs, I was doing the shoots. And then, and that last time we went there. She, my, Ori was even doing interviews with the models. So we really, um, and I started, we started doing the interviews, um, I guess, about halfway through the gender court book. Mm -hmm. But I feel for sure the images stand alone without needing an interview. Yeah, but I, I, get, I started to make the documentary, which I'm working on. Um, I've seen the, fa you know, I see the faces. And then to kind of put a story to it, to me, was really interesting. Um, Can you give me one quick example? Well, it, well the, the, the interesting thing is, and, I, and, and some of them are transcribed in the zine, but um, the interesting thing is, you know, some people came from, like, totally supportive um, uh, families with money, and, um, and others came from, you know, areas where they couldn't come out and then they had to move to San Francisco to be um, around people that were more like them and to be accepted because um, people in Mississippi are, you know, are not going to be as accepting or Arkansas. And uh, so the, I guess the point being there's a lot of different, everybody's got their own story. You seem to be always, which I think is good, onto another project. When did this project of gender queer begin to form in your mind? I guess, uh, I mean, it, it, I had the idea when I got, when Drew DeVoe emailed me photos that were kind of, to me, Drew, who identifies as a femme, queer femme, um, kind of had this uh, look that just uh, defied gender. And I felt like, wow, I want to do something with this. And uh, around, I guess around that time, I'd started to see... Uh, people like Jiz Lee and Sid Blakovich, and and uh, I thought they had a, a really unique look. So I kind of, before I took the first photo, I knew what I wanted to do. I just wasn't exactly sure, you know, with the lighting and the backdrops and all that. And I just, you know, with just a, a little bit of tweaking after I, in a lot of those photos in the beginning that I started with, with the curtain, and I didn't really have the lighting the way I wanted it yet, um, those are in the zine. And they kind of work better in the zine. And then the ones for the book, I then shot these same models, a couple of them over again. And it's funny, if you look at Jizz and you look at, uh, at Drew and the zine, they look, to me at least, I guess innocent would be the word, maybe, if, uh, if I was going to think of a word. And then if you look in the book, they look more confident. Because um, um, I shot them you know, not that far apart from that. But, uh, but still, I felt like it was a... It was a there was there was something different. There is something different about those two shoots, and I'm really glad that they're both out there to okay. be seen. Yeah. And what equipment did you use? Uh, I think it was a Photoflex uh, sixteen six foot octagon. Who makes that guy? Photoflex, I think. Right? Is it Photoflex? That I, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not talking about the lighting. I'm talking about the camera. Oh, the camera. I I used uh, for the beginning shoots for the first few years I used a Nikon um, D2X okay. and then now I use a D800 and and usually if I had enough if I have enough room I use like a 85 lens how well do you know them before you put them in front of your camera I really I don't think I knew any of them until oh. yeah the day we met everybody in the book except yeah there's one friend uh, and Buck Angel I've known for years um, and also uh, Sean, who was in the book. Um, I've known them for years, but other than that, everybody else I met the day of the shoot. And we emailed, you know, obviously. To... Cool. And would one, I assume that one subject would lead into another subject would lead into another subject. Yeah. Well, when, when they would see how much cool it was, they would say, well, why don't you shoot? Blah, blah, blah. It was... Yeah, but I don't really post. I don't post the images, so um, I have more of the so, stuff that you had shot. That yeah, day. yeah, they they did, and also Jiz Lee really helped a lot. Um, Who's with, Jiz Lee? Uh, Jiz is in the book and and wrote one of the essays, 
and really helped me find models in that community and said, and Jiz identifies genderqueer and, uh, and really helped me because Jiz is like completely, you know, totally respected and, uh, to go out there and like post about the project and say, Hey, you should do this. Mm-hmm. You know, this is, mm-hmm. and that really, uh, that really helped. And Buck Angel actually email and still, still does. Cause I'm still shooting, um, for my next project, which is trans. It's all trans women. Jiz or, or Buck rather, uh, emailed models that I didn't know and said, Hey, uh, this is Buck. I'm, Mm-hmm. I know this person, they're cool, shoot for them, you know, and that, mm-hmm. like, if I, if you don't have that type of support, mm-hmm. this is a very tight community, you mm-hmm. will not be able mm-hmm. to shoot. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people I shot, they're not even, mo- they're not models, you know, a lot of them, some of them are, but a lot of them are models, and, you know, so it just, they just like the project, they like the idea of being portrayed this way. And who wrote some of the essays, or can you listen? Morty Diamond, um, Ignacio Rivera, uh, Jenny Factor, Sarah Berghauser. I'm gonna, I may have pronounced that last name wrong, but um, and then Jizzly. Nice. Well, I'm anxious to, uh, you know, for me, I'm trying to, as I said in when I was asked, there, there, I think about August Sanders. I guess it was from the turn of the century. I'm assuming I have to check on that. And and then um, this farmer. Was there anyone else you were thinking of when you started this project, or while you were doing it? It preceded you. I mean, they're not like Man Ray's, which were very tight. These these are much, are really showing much more information than a than a typical portrait by Man Ray. There's a lot more body language in the photographs. T- Timothy Greenfield Saunders. I thought you were going to say him. Yeah, definitely Ryan Ryan McGinley. Did I already ask you how long the project took? Uh, the for the book it took five years. Wow. Right. Well, what about the video? What the video that? I've been working on, yeah, for for a few years. Um, it's called Identity. 